to all of you. Uh, how have all of you been in the last one week? Um, today, uh, I will be talking on a very interesting topic. Basically, uh, is on the six abilities of a wise leader. The six abilities of a wise leader. Now, as we navigate the current challenges that we face, you know, worldwide, there's a growing conversation around the topic of authenticity, um, empathetic, and also wise leadership. So, leadership, uh, you know, development requires transformative work, and there is a demand, all right, to encourage innovative thinking and also to nurture creativity within organizations. So exponential uh, technological advancement, including uh, AI, you know, all these are actually focusing on making the world a better place for the human race. So the focus lies on serving humanity and organization and leaders have to be able to meet the global demands and to lead the next generation to address the complexities of these changing times. So, and we really need a deeper understanding of what it takes to be a wise leader. Now, um, I now would like to bring to you Dr. Nonaka and Dr. Takeuchi's insight, stating that tacit and explicit knowledge would be incomplete without a third kind of knowledge. So, they call it practical wisdom. Now, uh, I've taken this from uh, the wise leader, okay, that is by Ikujiro Nonaka and also Dr. Hirotaka Takeuchi. So, the origin of practical wisdom lies in the concept of pronesis. Pronesis is actually an uh, uh, ancient Greek word and one of the three ways of knowing, you know, uh, what is described by uh, Aristotle, pronesis, has been translated as practical wisdom. Uh, prudence and also intellectual virtue. So, episteme, okay, or universally, they are actually uh, known as scientific knowledge, the know-how. Well, techne is or the skill based uh, on technological know know-how. All right, and the third one is pronesis, or what we call uh, mentioned just now, practical wisdom. So, the know what to be done. All right. So pronesis. So I will be deliberating uh, more on this. Now, the uh, Doctor Nonaka states that to make the right decisions, managers need to understand why a company exists. So it is raison d'etat. Did I pronounce it correctly? So basically, practical wisdom. All right. And according to Doctor Nonaka, is experiential knowledge and also an intellectual virtue that enables people to make ethically sound judgment. So it can be understood as the capacity to take incredible action to achieve the common good in specific circumstances. So it is not merely just theoretical knowledge, but it is an authentic ability to act on such knowledge for the common good of all. So practical wisdom equals to experiential knowledge and intellectual virtue, that is, sound judgment. So, the judgments must be guided by individuals' uh, values and ethics. So, to be a pronetic leader, okay, one must conduct themselves in uh, the interest of common goodness for all. So, they must decide what's good and act on it in every situation. So, the leader needs to have a solid philosophical foundation. Now, to see what's good uh, for a whole, all right, they must um, embrace the thought of process of not just living in harmony with the society, but also contributing to the society. So there are basically four ways to cultivate these uh, abilities. All right, uh, one is learning from experience and failures. Two is sharing this experience. Three, relentlessly pursuing the excellence. Okay, and lastly, which is the fourth one, becoming well worse in the liberal art. So basically, this is the first uh, ability of a wise leader that is to judge goodness. So the next one would be grasp 
the essence. So to see the essence and intuitively measure the nature and the meaning of people, things and events. All right. So pronetic leaders quickly sense what a particular situation demands and will act accordingly. So they will build a capacity, all right, to pay attention to what details and persist in pursuing an outcome relentlessly. So these leaders keep going back to the basics and they will concentrate on small things, right? Continuously interacting with subjective intuition and also objective knowledge. So executives and leaders should practice, okay? Three mind stretching routines. Number one, unceasingly questioning the basis of a problem or situation. Number two, learn to see the tree. And number three, and also learn to see the forest at the same time, all right? And to construct and test the hypothesis. So the first one is unceasingly questioning the basis of the problem or the situation. Two, learn to see the trees and the forest at the same time. And number three, construct and test the hypothesis. So this is the second ability for lead for a pronetic lead or for a wise leader where you they must be able to grasp the essence. Now the third one is basically to create shared context. Now create a space for sharing knowledge. So in Japan it is called bah die ba to construct a new meaningful interaction. So wise leaders must encourage the sharing of all whether it's tacit or explicit knowledge throughout the organization. So this can be in a formal setting of bah where participants with a sense, uh, shared sense of purpose, okay, will interact closely, why? To transcend one's own limited perspective and therefore you create a new knowledge. And this can be an informal Bach setting or a space setting where the transfer of knowledge will take place like a cafe or a sports activity. So you see, leaders, wise leaders must or should foster and nurture the sharing of emotions and the different points of view, further fostering acceptance and to view a situation from a different lens. So a bar can be top down or bottom up, right? So a wise a leader must create shared context, right? So the next one is being a wise leader, you must be able to communicate the essence. So through metaphors or stories, you know, or with other figurative language, you know, so you can communicate the essence. So a wise leader must possess the ability to express and to communicate the essence of things clearly and to incorporate the metaphors in clarifying the objective and also the vision. So individuals with diverse background and uh, different different experiences will be able to grasp uh, the concept better when it is portrayed through the art of storytelling. Understand what I'm saying? So if you can able to tell them in story, right, it's so much more easier for them to grasp the gist of right, what they're trying to say. So a story can help in gaining the insights from other uh, perspectives and also to understand one thing while envisioning another. So Dr. Nonaka, in his uh, uh, writing, he suggested to read as many novels as possible in all genres, you know, to build this storytelling ability. Now, the next point here is the wise leader must be able to exercise political power. Wow, political power. <laughs> so they must be able to bring people together and combining everyone's knowledge and effort to pursue what? To pursue the goals collectively as a team. So a wise leader, in addition to identifying and to communicate the essence, must be able to see the necessary political means to obtain common good. So they should be able to strive to understand all the contradiction in human nature like, um, you know, good, bad, uh, civility, incivility, uh, optimism, pessimism, and to fuse them depending on the situation. So leaders must be imaginative in ways that they lead people to do better. So Dr. Nonaka actually mentioned about the shrewdness and also the stubbornness 
okay, are often necessary to create something new and good. Okay, so that is exercising political power. Now, the last one, all right, in order to foster practical, uh, that the wise leader must be able to foster practical wisdom in others. So, they must be able to distribute the practical wisdom throughout the organization with all employees at all levels. So, pronatic leaders lead by example. So, so that you no, know, and others can learn about practical wisdom by observing how leaders conduct themselves. So, a formal system of apprenticeship is recommended to foster this practical wisdom. Practical wisdom should also be uh, should not be regarded as an entity to possess, but to share, right, and to distribute at all levels. So, Dr. Nonaka states that fostering distributed leadership is therefore one of the wise leaders' biggest responsibility. Okay, so uh, once again, these are the uh, six abilities of uh, a wise leader. All right, um, I hope it resonates with you. Uh, if you are able to, please pick up, you know, uh, this adaptation, all right, uh, uh, of the wise leader all right, by Dr. Nonaka and Dr. Takeuchi. Once again, thank you so much for your kind attention. Be the wisest leader possible and be a blessing to everyone around you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and be a blessing. Bye-bye.